Good evening and welcome to Tea Time. Everybody, welcome to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me. It is July 8th. I'm going to talk about my weekend and get to my guest real quick. I'm so excited she's here. So basically the weekend, I didn't do much, but 4th of July, I was in Queens with my parents. Um, you know, my mom's on the 23rd floor. I call it the penthouse and she's got this beautiful view of Manhattan. So we got to watch the, you know, Macy's fireworks and it was great to be with Familia as always. You know, because we know how to party and eat. That's, that's basically <laughs> it, and that's what we did. And then the rest of the weekend, I really didn't do too much. You know, I just spent the weekend really learning my lines for a movie that I'm doing with my good friend Omar Moore. We'll be filming it in Staten, Italy um, uh, next weekend. And um, that was really it. And, um, yeah, so I'm just going to get to my guest because, you know, my show goes fast. <laughs> so she's an actor. She's a writer-producer. She's also a comedian. Sharon Pfeiffer, hi. hi! How are you? I'm so excited you're here because even though she's originally a Long Island girl, you actually live in Florida. I do. And you came up for a family function, I and I was like, listen, I want to get you on the show if I can. And we figured it out, so I'm glad you're here. Yeah. And um, But you're originally from Franklin Square? Yes, well, I actually was born in Port Jefferson. Oh, Port Jeff. Port Jefferson, yes. And my family did the reverse migration. <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually people move from Brooklyn and Queens and they go out. Right. You know, right, right. they go east, not my family. We went the opposite way. Okay. So we went from all the way out east and headed towards the city. Yeah. And then I ended up in Franklin Square. Yeah, so yeah. I, I lived there too. I was in Limbrook and then went to okay. Franklin Square. Um in the early 90s but yeah. you um and then you went to Zawanica High School? I did I graduated from Zawanica in 1982 we just had our reunion graduated the same year yeah, the same yeah, age. yeah. yeah. and and we also I'm just a little shout out to my classmates yeah go ahead we're doing another not a, a high school reunion but all of our classmates were getting together at the end of the month oh, nice. and we're doing um a uh, 60th birthday reunion That's because right, we're, all, all turning we're 60. all turning 60. So, yeah. I know you turned 60 in April. I did just April. in April. Yes. I'm turning 60 September. Birthday and, sister. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's so <laughs> cool, but it's a lot of fun because I see all my friends posting birthday, birthday. And I'm like, I know we all know how old they're turning. Right? We all graduated in 82. Um, so, when you were in high school, were you yes. involved in any of the arts, whether it be, you know, chorus or theater or. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I was I was one of those uh, people, and I think I still am. I never really belonged to any clique Click. or club or yeah. anything. Yeah. But what I did do is, and it, I guess you could consider it an art, I was in cosmetology. Um, Sawanica was a vocational high school, uh -huh, uh -huh. so everybody who went to Sawanica had to do some kind of, you know, they either took shop or they took mechanics, mm -hmm. or they took cosmetology, mm -hmm. which right. is I did. Yeah. So I, I actually graduated high school with my, I got my license nice. to do uh, hair and nails. I ended up becoming a manicurist. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I never was in drama or, or singing. Right, First of right, all, I can't right. sing okay. for my life. <laughs> but I will tell you, I always wanted 
to be an actor since I'm that big. I'm not much taller than that right. now, but yes. since I'm a... And we're both five foot two. Yeah, we're both the same height. <laughs> and wearing some platforms Yeah, today, we both, right? we both so you know. Both. Yeah. <laughs> but we, do you ever leave the house without heels? No, no I try I not either. to. I no. try not to. No, I, yeah. I really try not My to. My sneakers have a heel. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I'm t I mean it. I almost wore them too. But so, um, funny. so I always wanted to be an actor. But um, growing up in a very large family, which mm. I did, I have you four brothers and, yeah. and one sister. One six, yeah. It just wasn't. I don't want to say it wasn't supported because that it sounds negative. But my my family, it just wasn't the thing that no, we my, did. No, my parents didn't. Yeah, when they I told weren't. Them it wasn't like, oh to... yes, go be yeah, an actor. Exactly. It was like, you know, yeah. go learn how to do something so you can make a living. Right, right. right. And um, so it just never happened. And then I was a young mother. I, I yes. had my daughter very early. Mm -hmm. I was 22 when I had my Danielle. So like, I never pursued my own interests. Right. And you yeah, know, as you a had mom. Yeah, you had yeah, to raise. Yeah, yeah. I had so, to raise my daughter too. You had to raise. You have to do what you have to do, and then exactly. put your goals and dreams on the back burner. That's and that's right. why it's like a second act for us, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. So when my daughter finally went out on her own, and I um, was on my second divorce, um, <laughs> I said, <laughs> hmm, what do I want to do? Like, what do I want to do? Right, and that's a question you, know, you really didn't dive into I was really at a crossroads. Yeah, I never really... Um, had an opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. to pursue my own interests. Right. So I always wanted to be an actor. Yeah. And I had a customer in the salon that I owned, and he was an actor, like a working actor. And uh -huh. his name was Dwayne, I'll never forget it. Okay. And I said, Dwayne, um, you're an actor. Right. I, how do you I make think, it happen? Yeah, how, what should I do? And he said, Sharon, the first thing you need to do you need to take Head an shots. act. No, he said oh. you need to take an acting class. Okay, class. Mm -hmm. You just have to take a class. I know exactly who to tell you. In South Florida, it's so different than New York. So this was all happening in Florida. In Florida, yeah. It didn't happen no, up here. No, no, it only. And for me, because you're in Florida, how long now? I moved there in 1998. Wow. Yeah, it's a long time. Okay. But this acting thing only happened in 2009. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was know. already considered old. Well, we're mature. Mature. Well, you women. Know, call it what you want, but, <laughs> you know, I was like already an older woman pursuing this thing. Well, that's the whole thing. thing. Yeah, when, and, yeah. you know, it's so hard to get roles. In it is. Thing. It is. But I took a course with um, the person to take a class with down there. Mm -hmm. And after the three-day workshop, whatever you want to call it, I just asked her point blank. I said, I'm at a crossroads in my life. I don't know what to do. Right. And what do you think? Just me taking this class. She said, I never tell people what to do. Okay. It's not what I'm here for. Right. She said, but you have really good instincts. Mm -hmm. And if I were you, I would pursue it. Cool. So... That was enough for me. That's that all I needed to hear. You know. So that was it. I went and she. I asked her where do I get headshots right. and blah blah blah. Right, right. And the rest is... guide me, sensei. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Show me the way. But the rest was really history. I I made my way. It was you know South Florida it's, for me is coming from New York where it's I mean, culture. It's, it's a culture shock. Florida is a culture shock and yes. it's a culture void. Yes. Florida is. Literally, and by the way, we lost all of our incentives, our tax incentives, everything is gone. So all of the wow. progress that we had made regarding right, production right, and everything right. literally disappeared overnight. Wow. I was working on a Netflix show called Bloodline. Yes. Um, which I was so proud to work on yes. that show. Uh -huh. And literally, we all got called into one of the studios and was basically told, you know, in two weeks we're done. Wow. I mean, it was amazing. It was that's, that's, unbelievable. That's so, I mean, it was terrible. Upsetting and uh, depressing and. Uh, All the things you can think yeah, of is very, what, very, as an actor. Yes. And I had really just started. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it was really shocking. Yeah. You know, everyone tells me, Sharon, if you want to be an actor, you've got to go to New York or LA or even Georgia. They're telling you to. 
to try to get out of Florida? Pretty much. At the time or now? At the time and now. Yeah, you, you know, I've still, always been told that. Yeah, I know there is, there, there is some filming going on there, but it's very, it's, it's very, very hard. There's a lot going on in very New York. Limited. A lot going on here right now. I know. So I, I'm very lucky. I booked eight. I booked. I booked eight things that I'm doing, whether it's shorts or films or uh, documentary, whatever it is, whatever it is. Uh, I'm and I'm. You know, it's it's not easy. I get everything on my own. I don't have an agent. I don't have a manager. It's like, you know, you got to pimp yourself out. You have to pimp yourself out. <laughs> right? And you have to be diligent. You, you have to have be tenacious. To. You have to. You have to You're have your own pair. best advocate. You have to have a pair. And you have to not, not, not you know, like I tell my mom, because my parents weren't supportive. I'll put right. it out there. They just weren't. I wanted yeah. to go to high school performing arts. And they're like, no, no. it's not happening. <laughs> Absolutely And like not. I try to tell my mom, because she's like, when are you going to get a real job? And what are you going to I said, it's like throwing spaghetti up against the wall and eventually something has to stick. You know what I'm saying? And I can't, I don't want to give up because then you look back and you say, no. what if I didn't? So at least if I don't, then at least, at least I could say I tried. You tried. You know? You tried. You and made the And one thing may lead to somewhere else. You don't know where it's going to lead you in this business. You never you know. know. That. You never you know. You never know. You never know. It's crazy. It's just insane. Um, do we have to take my first break? Do we have to take my first break? All right, let's take my first break <laughs> when we come back more with Sharon. Don't go away. <laughs> Wonder Woman was everything to little girls, especially that look like me. She stands for being a voice for people that need a voice. My organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making. And to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. All right. Is everybody having a good time tonight or what? That's what I thought. All right, so we are live, Paradise Studios, New York. Give yourself a round of applause for coming out tonight. Woo. Well, hi there, Teresa. It's John York from General Hospital. I am just checking in because apparently you have a great talk show called Tea Time on Strong Island TV. I want you to have continued great success and have a lot of fun. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun, and that's pretty much the key to everything, isn't it? So continued success. I'm proud of you. Have a great day, Teresa. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me. I am with my friend, Sharon Pfeiffer. She's an actor, a writer, producer, comedian. She does it all, like me, and we have so much in common. <laughs> So I want to get back to, you know, you, you're in Florida, you want to act, everyone's telling you, you know, New York, LA, New York, LA. Now, yes, you and I are vertically challenged at five foot two, and I have to tell you, I've lost a couple of roles because of my height, yeah. and I have told, I told them I'll wear platforms, put me on a milk box, crate, whatever, and it's a little depressing. Did they tell you anything else about oh, your gosh. look? Oh, <laughs> gosh. Yes. Well, first of all, this, this hair color is no. Okay, this started in 2020. Okay, but I love I, it, by the way. Thank you so much. I love it. When I first started acting, I was a platinum blonde. Okay. And also... But I have to say, I like you with dark hair, because I've seen you with dark hair. Thank you. And my teeth were very crooked. Okay. Now, I didn't realize I had crooked teeth. I grew up with a very healthy dose of self-confidence. Yes, yes. I never realized I had crooked teeth. I right. really didn't. Right, right. Um, I don't know, I just, it, it never occurred to me that I had a problem with my teeth. Right. First thing my first agent said was, what are you doing about your teeth? Wow. Right. So I was like, what about my teeth? I mean. And did, she, she said, you need to have your teeth straightened. Did you get braces? I did. I went and okay. I had. Because I had braces too. I, I have, I got the Invisalign. Okay. Which was, you know, very expensive. Yeah. But I did it. Yeah. And then. The very next thing out of her mouth was, and what are you doing about that accent? Yeah, now, remember, I live in Florida. Right. And I was like, um, what do you mean? And she said, your accent is very thick. And I said, and? 
And she said, you got to get rid of it. And I said, yeah, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she said, well, if you want to work. And I said, listen, I understand what you're trying to do, and I respect it. Right. Because I know you want me to work right. and sell cookies. Right. Right. But that's not what I that's not who I am. Right. That's not what I want to do. Yes. And that's not that's not that that's not the kind of work that I want to do. Right. I don't want to sell cookies. Right. And I don't want to work on Publix commercials. Right. Right. I am who I am. <laughs> I am who I am. Yeah. Um you Marissa want to stay authentic to, to yourself. Marissa Tomei, Lorraine Bracco, Edie Falco, so on and so forth. Keep going. I don't see them speaking like they're going to do a Shakespeare play. Right. It's not what I want to do. Right. Now, if I have to speak more eloquently, I can. I can but too. But I prefer not to. Right. I'm who I am. Right. And I'm going to stay who I am. So in South Florida, when I used to walk in the room, for all five for two of me, with the big bazoombas and the New York accent and the slightly crooked teeth and a little bit of a lisp and the big giant hair, et cetera, et cetera, they, I'm a character. Right, now, how many right, roles right. for, at that time, right. an almost 50-something, right, right. let's call it a Dolly Parton with a yeah, New York yeah, accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's not a whole lot of roles for yeah, that. Yeah, no, I get it. But guess what? I was booking. You were booking. And the first thing you booked was something called Don't Mess with the IRS. That was back in 2010. That was like your first. Yeah, that was the first get, thing, gig. first yeah. project yeah. that I ever went to an audition. It was my first audition. Yeah. Like, you know, I got, they sent me the, the sides, mm -hmm. and here's where you're going to go to audition. And I was so nervous and excited, and I actually <laughs> booked the lead. That's amazing. Like I could, I, 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 Come on, how many, how many times did someone go out for the first time and book I a lead? I couldn't believe That's it was amazing. a short film, but yeah. it was awful. It was one of these local, you know, short film project projects and yeah but it gets your foot in the but door it got my and foot then hopefully the gets you some kind of footage to put towards a reel which I find and I, th I think I told you this or I tell a lot of people like sometimes getting my footage is it's easy to give birth and to get your footage it's it's a pain in the behind and can I tell you something T yes <laughs> one of the one of the persons that was on that project that I worked with his name is Joe Mignon I have to mention his name mm -hmm. do you know that we still work together we That's still work great. on projects. Yeah. He's one of my favorite people to work with. We call we we have a little band of people like you work with the same people over and over yeah. because you learn that there are certain people that are just wonderful to work with. Mm -hmm. And we call ourselves the Rat Pack, actually, our merry little band of uh, yeah, actors. Yeah. But um, he's actually Pasta Pete in my project oh, from Brooklyn great. to Boca. Oh, that's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but we met on that actual Wow. Don't Mess with the that's, IRS. That's, Isn't that funny? That's awesome. Yeah, so, it's good. so all these years later. But you've still... done you've done a lot of uh, features, shorts, yes. TV. Yes. Um, now, you also did something, um, uh, Married a Mobster. I Married a Mobster on the ID channel. That's the was... ID. We have a pic of that. Yeah. Um, if, if if he'll pull it up, the ID, the ID, ID, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that was back and we filmed that in 2012. That was on the ID channel. It was it was on for two years. Yeah, there it is. There you yeah. are as a blonde. Yeah, that's there me you as are. a blonde. Now, if leave that there for a second, thank you. That was yeah, that was back in. I'll tell you, was it 2011 or 2012? Uh, we f I, I believe we filmed it in 2011. I think it came out in 2012. Right now, that was also um, um, season two. Yeah, season episode two, episode three. Episode three. It was called the Rule Breaker. The Rule Breaker. The and rule this breaker. is this that is the, they were short. Like mini, I call them mini documentaries yes. on women who were married. Based on based on reality. Your this is reality. True, yeah, and these are true stories. Yes. And they and it wasn't me acting. We they had actors portraying us. Right. So it was really interesting. Right. I, I, it was a fun thing to do. Yeah. Um, of course, everybody was like, "Oh my God, are you afraid? You know, you're going on right. You're going public. You're going public with your life." But I wasn't afraid. Okay. And um, I'm still not. Uh, obviously, okay. I talk about it publicly. Yes. Um, but uh, it was it was interesting. But how did they? How did how did they find out about you? Or they were looking? How did that all happen? Well, it was an interesting thing because um, I was very friendly with Love Majeski, and I you probably don't know the name, but she was on Mob Wives. Right. And then they did an episode of her on this show. Okay. 
And because we were friendly, they always said, do you know any other women who would who want to even come forward and right, tell exactly. their story? So it's she threw my name in the hat yeah. and then the producers contacted me. Right. And I'm still friendly with, with Dan Pearson, who was one of the producers mm -hmm. of that show. Mm -hmm. Hi, did hi you Dan. hesitate at all or did you just jump right into it? Um, I actually didn't hesitate and I'll tell you why I didn't hesitate. Because my 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 ex husband, my daughter's father, right? Um, at we we don't talk anymore. Right. So I didn't really feel a particular. I try not to talk to my ex. Allegiance like to him. <laughs> yes. My the other person that I was involved in, with, who is away, you know, he's he's still away. He's right. been away for, you know, now it's I think twenty two years. Wow. Okay. Um. I knew that he wouldn't have a problem with it because I have nothing but the best things to say about him. Right. And I did in this in the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a matter of fact, he 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 loved it. Oh, <laughs> he good. loved it because people don't okay. usually say nice things about him. Right. So he really loved it. Right. And the the third person that I was involved with, I I hate to use the word hate because it's not it's a negative thing. Right. But he. Was loathed. the worst. Is loathed. Loathed a is a word. wonderful word. Okay. And I, you know, I was happy to do it. Right, right, right. And I was happy to. Yeah. Let the world know what a terrible human and being. And what kind he was. of? Um, after it aired, people watched it. What um, kind of? Um, well, you know, I felt kind of bad because they edit it the way that they want to. That's they don't, the other thing. You have no choice in the way they edit it. Right. And they kind of painted me like this mob mall. You know, this mob mall girl mm -hmm. that just, I only, you know, like I only slept with mob guys. Right, well, First right. of all, I was married right. to Vinny. Yeah. And I'm just going to say first names. Right. Ronnie I was with for years. Right. And Joe I was with for years. Right. So I, I wasn't like this sleep around mob girl. But, right. But just to keep it simple, yeah. once you're in that life, you don't get out of that life. Right. Normal guys do not come over to you. Right. And 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 want to be with you. You once you are, so and so's, wife. Right. You're always oh that's so and so's ex-wife. But you didn't grow up in that life. No, I did not. I, you were not at all. that was not your world. No, not at all. I grew up very normal, a right. very normal right. Irish Italian Catholic yeah. family. <laughs> you yeah. know, my family didn't have anything to do with that at all. Right. And but but. I left home when I was 18, so okay. I was already living on my own four years right. when I met my ex-husband. Right, right, right. And we actually met in a nightclub, and okay. it's a really interesting story. I'm not story. surprised. That's how it's we met It's a really interesting story how, how we met. Well, I'll have to day. come back, you know, <laughs> and, and do another show just on this whole, my whole past life. Yeah. Because it's a whole different, yeah. you know, yeah, I don't know yeah. what you really want to talk about, yeah. but people always are interested in that part of my life. Right, right. I mean, I, you know... You know, Angel has her own show too, right? So I was on her show one night. We were on until like one o'clock in the morning. Wow. Her and I yeah. talking. Yeah. I mean, like we could. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I know. We could go on forever and ever so, and ever. I know. But I met him in a nightclub, and the reason that I met him was because Sonny Francis's daughter wanted to kick my ass. Oh, okay. At this 231. Do you yeah, remember yeah. 231? I used to go there okay, all the time. I, you know, I lived there. <laughs> And and, yes, and she for I whatever reason I don't remember yeah. all the details, but she wanted to beat me up, right. and I like I'm I don't want to get beat up. Right. And one thing led to another. It was and I didn't know even know who she was. And right. was like, you don't know who that is. That's something. Right. Right. Door. Right. So anyway, when I met my ex husband, like two weeks later, I was like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, just to like, right, right, you know, s yeah, you know, like I need my own. Protection. Protection. Yeah, right? I get it. Yeah. And he was so tall and handsome and good looking with eyes like you, green yeah. eyes and yeah. beautiful. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> come stand over here, handsome. So that was it. Wow. And that was it. Oh Seriously. My God. That was True it. Story. That was it. No, True yeah, story. no, I get it. So, wow. but once you're, once, yeah. once you're in that life. Right. It's, but you had to, you had to make a decision and you had to, you had to leave. Well, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I had two nail salons that I walked away from. Wow. That literally, wow. I walked away from. Yeah, yeah. And everything, my whole life. I left yeah. New York in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. Franklin Square, mm -hmm. left everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. It's hard. I reinvented hard. myself. That's very hard. It's very hard to do. 
really hard. So but. it was, I'm not going to, I don't want to really get into all the no, details. No, we're not. We, we're not, we can make that a whole other show. Yeah, no, but that's, but that's, I that's, came to. I just wanted to touch upon that you were on the uh, the show and that you were, yeah. you know. If they want to see it, you can go to Hulu. Yeah. Wherever it's, I Married a Mobster, ID Channel, season yeah. two, episode, episode three, three, The Rule Breaker. Yeah. My my name was not Sharon Pfeiffer then, it was Sharon McDonald. Uh -huh. M C D O N N E L L. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a true story. Yeah. And it's a quick watch, it's only a half yeah. hour long. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it gives you all the gory details. In 20, we will move on to 2013. Yeah. Um, is when you worked for the first time with Michael Rispoli on Not For Human Conception. Actually, he right? corrected, He always corrects me. He's like, that's not the first time we worked together. Oh, you worked together we worked. That? Yeah, we worked on a, a show called Magic City. Oh, Yeah, yeah okay. we worked, and he had a great role. You know, he had oh, a, that's he great. Had a, he had a, he had yeah, a, a I love him. He's great. He's amazing. Yeah, he And is. that's where we met. But but you know I don't I don't really recall meeting him. I get it. But yeah, he remembers. He's like, no, no, we met. Um, and then we we actually worked on Not for Human Consumption. Yeah, and that's yet. on Tubi. If anyone wants yeah, to take great, a look at great that, great film. Yeah, and we've been friends ever yeah. since. Yeah, he's he's sweetheart. Yeah. Like he's, I said, after I saw him in the city, I got to meet him at yeah, later he's on. Dynamite. He's dynamite. He's great. Just a great, and it, what a great actor and a theater actor yes, as well. Yes, yes. Well, that's how I, I started. Fabulous. I started in theater. He was in the Pulitzer Prize yes, winning yes. play. Uh, um, between Riverside and yeah, Crazy. Yeah, that's the one where I. That's the one I saw. I met him. He was he was fabulous. Amazing. Just amazing. Amazing. Twenty nineteen was a very busy year for you. Yes. Um, you worked with again a mutual friend of ours, Ciro DiPaggio, yes. on on Brass Knuckles. Yes. Loved it. Thank and you. uh that's with Yokes, Giannis, and yes. um Anthony Antone Antoni, yes. depending on how you want to pronounce yeah. it, Carone. Um another great group of the, who people. I love working yes. with. We've worked. As a matter of fact, I'm on Silent Partners as well. Very I know, small role. I know. Very small role. I know. Very, I told Ciro, I said, I'll come down to Florida. Just yeah. let me know. Yeah. The event, the premiere is... That's in August, yeah. right? It's in yeah. August. I know that um, Gary Pastor will yeah. be there. Yeah. Um, Gary's a good friend there. of mine. Yeah. And we were in the city with Joe and everyone yeah. watching it in yeah. Manhattan. But I'm, ex I'm excited about down. it. Oh, I'd love to if I could. You gotta come down. I really try to come down. Okay, I'll try. No, you should. I really, I'll try. Just fly in and fly out. I'll try. You could stay in my house. I will if try. You want. Oh, I'm, that's so sweet of you. Yeah. And then you did the Beach Bum. Yeah. With Hello, Matthew, Matthew McConaughey, yeah. Snoop Dogg, Jimmy Buffett, Zac uh, Zac Efron, Zac Efron Martin Isla Lawrence, Fisher. Jonah Hill. I mean, that was like an all star. It was cast. an all star cast. It was literally his worst film <laughs> that he ever made. It really is. It's a horrible film. But I had. But it it's was funny, me. though. I mean, did it's you funny, watch it? stupid. Some of it, it's funny, Did you see stupid. my scene? I did not see your scene. It was I'm in just, the first 10 minutes. I, I, I caught, like, bits and pieces. I gotta, I gotta watch it, watch it's it. It's in the first 10 minutes. Yes, you played, um... The sexy older woman. A sexy older woman. I have a sex Hello. scene with Matthew McConaughey. There you if go. If you guys are interested. <laughs> it's $1.99 on Amazon. <laughs> Go rent it, because then I get residuals. Oh, my God, it's great. You'll get great. to see me have sex with Matthew McConaughey. There you go. I mean, come on. How was it? <laughs> you know what? He has big hands. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, then you did a Jonas Brothers music video. That was amazing. How much fun was that? It was that? so much fun. The only thing I don't like about that whole thing was that it was used in with, with Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. And we never got, we just got paid for doing the video. And it right. was, and to me, that was, should have been considered a national Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. You know, a SAG yes. thing. And it yes. wasn't. And yes. I was really mad about that. <laughs> and um, then after that, you were in The Irishman. Yes. So you, very, came, you came up here for that. I right? flew myself up here. Yeah. I was, it was not a speaking role or anything. Right, right. I'm an old school manicurist. Mm -hmm. And I am with, um, I don't even remember the name of the, what's that background? In, Grumman? In, no. What you know, the saying? big background casting. Big background? Well, um, I don't know what Wolf? they're called. Are you talking about the company? Yeah. So, uh, Wolf? It's not Wolf? Not Wolf, the other one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. But they have me with them if they, when they need an old school, I'm not okay. talking about a nail technician. Right. I'm talking about a manicurist. Right, right, that right. With the soaking your hands in Correct. the water. Yes. Doing the like Madge. When they need, like Madge. Yes. The young people have no idea. They what have no idea about. who Madge is. But it's anyway, a, an old Palm Olive commercial. So they needed a manicurist. Yeah. And they said, and they think I live here in New York because I have my daughter's address right. and my daughter's phone number. Right. 
So I said, I absolutely can do it. They said, can you be here this afternoon for a fitting? I said, no, I cannot. Can I come in tomorrow? Wow. This is how crazy I am. Right. They said, yes, can you be here tomorrow at four? I said, yes, I can. I hung up the phone and I booked a flight. Wow. And I made it for the fitting. Good for you. Yes. And then, um, you know, then the shoot was whenever it was, which yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, made yeah. it. Yeah. And what was exciting about that whole experience and why I did it, let me tell you why I did it. Everyone's like, why would you do such a thing for background? Because I wanted to work with Scorsese. I totally agree. I did Maestro at, with background okay. with Bradley Cooper. Okay. Why'd I do it? Because he was there directing me. That's all, the only reason, right? you know, Scorsese's old. Yes. He is. That's yeah, old. yeah, yeah. You know, who knows how long he's going to be around. Yeah. And I just wanted to do it, right? Yeah. So I get to the set. I'm going to try to make this quick. Okay. <laughs> and they don't have the beauty parlor set up the way at you... all. Oh, wow. It's not set up at all. My station isn't set up. Nothing is set right. up. Right. Because I like to go, like, look and yeah. see. Yeah. So I went over to the prop person, yeah. prop master. Right. And I said, um, do you, because I brought all my stuff, do you want me to, like, set up my table? And he looks at me and he goes, we don't even know what to do. Wow, yeah. I said, do you yeah. want me to help you? Oh, wow. And he, would you? Yeah. I said, I would love to. Yeah. I went in the back with them, to the back where everything was, mm -hmm. and we're picking things up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I helped them set up the, wow, the, the, scene. Set, the scene. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. So now we get ready to shoot. Scorsese, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it because I don't want it to sound like it's more than it was, but he comes over and he, all he does, he taps me and he goes, good job, kid. That's, That's awesome. it. I was like, oh, he yeah. tapped my shoulder. But I was so happy. Like, yeah, I felt like no, I, I get contributed, it. but yeah. it was worth it. But here's the best part of the whole Irishman thing. Yeah. Did you get, do you, are you sick? Not yet. Okay, no. so I got my screener because I'm sick. Well, that's why I was going to ask you how you got your sick. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah. When I got my screener, right. I open up the DVD for the Irishman. There's my, me sitting at my table working on. Whatever oh, her name wow. is, the girl with the hat yeah, from yeah, the Goodfellas yeah. that's in yeah, the movie. Yeah, I can yeah. never remember her name. Wow. There's me in the DVD. That's of awesome. all three and a half hours. They oh took my, my God. So was it, it was worth it? So worth it. Was it worth it? So there you go, people. Wow. The, if people you never ask know. you, go yeah, do just, it. You never just know. do it. Just, just yourself in it. Um, so what got you your sad card? A Metro PCS commercial. There you go. Okay. All right. And I'm in the commercial for about. 10 seconds. Wow. Not, e not even. I'm, I'm, being, I'm exaggerating. Five seconds. Wow. 2020, you did Bad Boys for Life. I, I'm in. You, you see me for. You were tour, you see me tour, for tour a bus guide? Yeah. You see me for a, an eighth of a second. <laughs> but as long as they see you. And I had a whole scene. Yeah. But they cut, like you know. They but editing. as long as my face That's was in it, it, I'm still getting residuals. I know. It's awesome. Isn't that great? It's amazing. I know. I love then it. You did um, 2023, you did. Um, Days of Distancing, which was a, a mini series. That was a very odd thing. That was one of those COVID things. Yeah. Very similar to your last guest that yeah, you had, yeah, where we yeah. had to film it ourselves. Right. It was a very interesting thing. I loved doing it, but it was a weird thing. Went won awards in all the film festivals and whatever. But is it going Look anywhere? At that. You know, you know these things. Don't and then um, Lost Treasure, you wrote it. I wrote it, yes. produced it. Yes. It was for the 48-hour film. Yes. We won all kinds of best Amazing. director, best this, best that, but did, but we did not get to go to um, Portugal for the big right, hoo ha, -ha right, right. because we didn't win best, best picture of Miami, right, Fort Lauderdale. Right. So, but we, I'm very proud of that film. It's a comedy. Yeah. yeah. I almost was considering uh, submitting it. For the Long Island well, Film Festival. Well, there's two out, yeah, and there's Jerry Ferretti's, and yeah. then you have uh, Deborah Markowitz. Yeah, so, yeah, I was considering, you know, right. submitting it, but I haven't gotten around to it because I'm busy right now. You're very busy, and yeah. we're gonna find out what she's busy with after this break. Don't go away. <laughs> Wonder Woman was everything to little girls, especially that look like me. She stands for being a voice for people that need a voice. My organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making. And to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. 
Hi, I'm Georgia Rose, founder of Zencuda. You can watch me on the Soul Space podcast every Friday at noon on Channel 20 for spiritual guidance. And as you all know, um, that is how I first opened into my own psychic gifts was through the angelic realm, astrology. And so we've got Mars and the sun together in Scorpio, which creates a lot of combustion in the astrological world. We call that a Kazimi and tarot. When the Four of Cups right side up, it means we have a lot of choices to make and we're not looking at what's really being divinely given to us. We're too busy in the busyness of the choices to really see the divine intervention, the divine timing, and the divine guidance. We're the place. Watch the Soul Space Podcast. How you doing? It's Sal, the voice of Alan Tenetti. Why are you watching me? You should be watching Teresa Canis Tracy. Tea time with Teresa Canis Tracy Farrell. And make sure you, you you follow Teresa on Facebook. Tea time with Teresa Canis Tracy Farrell. We'll see you there. I love the way you say my name. I love. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I'm with Sharon Pfeiffer. She's an actor and a comedian and a writer and a producer. And um, we're going to talk about you played a lead lead role in an original play yes. called uh, The Lost Virginity Tour. Yes. And that was the first time you were on stage. Well, right? not the first theater, time I was on theater, stage, theater. but the first time I've ever been in a full-length okay. stage right. play. Because you know there's nothing like a live audience. There's nothing like, a, as you know, we both do yeah. stand-up yeah. comedy. Yeah. So, And I attribute my ability to do this play right. on having five years' experience as a stand-up. There you go. Um, and I didn't really realize how much doing stand up would help me with the play. So we're going to we're going to put up a couple of pictures of you doing stand up and I want you to tell me how did you get into that? And how okay. long how long are you actually doing stand up comedy? Well, I, I I started doing stand up 5 years ago. Oh, there's okay. Marianne. Yeah, we're going to we're going to Okay, so um Marianne Mazzano does Danny Aiello's uh, Italian chicks of comedy. I'm I'm one of the chicks, and you're one of the chicks yeah. because um, Marianne did a show in Florida. In Florida, yeah, and in she called you up, and you yeah. you host. You well, I, the show. I, I you yeah, also, I emceed the show, and I also it. Yeah. you also in it. Yeah, right? yeah. It was How much, so much fun, fun was that? Oh my god, it was it was yeah. amazing. I, well, great. first of all, I love her. Yes, like what's not love to love? Too. She's amazing. Yeah, and but it was so much fun, and it was really yeah. out of my. It's not in my wheelhouse right, because I don't right, sing. Right, right. And you know, I, I, I mean, I really don't. I don't. I'm a horrific. My my speaking, my speaking voice is horrible. Can you imagine me singing? Oh. Disgusting. So, um, but it was really fun. I just I. But loved how did it. you how did you get in, into the stand up? How did you? Well, just... the stand up came about because, well, we're actors, right? Yes. And I actually love comedic acting. Mm -hmm. Like I. Right. That's what I. That's my right. genre, right? I love and to be funny. And your reel is hysterical. Thank yeah. you, thank you. So I thought that it would probably behoove me to. Well, look, look, all of your favorite comedians end up doing great movies. Look at Robin Williams, yep. and, yes. and they end up doing TV yeah. shows yeah, yeah. and all that. So I right. thought maybe I should learn, learn stand up, mm -hmm. right. and have that in my tool. Box, right, you know, right. Ha Your arsenal. learn, right, yep. my arsenal, mm -hmm. and and just learn it. And now, did you take any classes for that too? Like, well, acting? I went and took. Well, I took. I, I had already been acting. Okay. I had no, already but been. like you said, acting. You th you were told to take a class first. Of course. Did I you take a comedy stand-up class? Well, first? that's what I did. Five okay. years ago, I took a comedy okay. course right. with a, a company, a group of uh, comedians right. that they call themselves Comic Cure because they believe that laughter. You know, cures everything. Cures everything. Love it. So, and they were wonderful. And I took like a, I don't know, eight week course or uh -huh, something like uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. And then we had a graduation. Yep. Kind show. of like what you did, yeah. a graduation yeah. show. And at the graduation show, and right. this is a true story. Yeah. Um, you know, we all did well, all of us, all the students did mm -hmm, well. But mm -hmm. at the graduation show, a man approached me and said, You were phenomenal, and I'd like to book you at the Boca Black Box. <gasps> This is at the graduation show. Oh my God! And I, so of course I'm like, oh, sure, sure. He says, he goes, can you do 20 minutes? <laughs> now listen, I oh all my I God. heard Did was he I want to book you. Did not know that he you. wasn't at a graduation show? That's what? hysterical. So of course me, I sure. said, yeah, sure I can. Of wow. course I could do 20 minutes. There you go. All I had was a tight three minutes. Wow. And so he, I said, what are you paying? So he says, five hundred dollars. 
Now oh, this is right. And then, and then so you say, I said, I've got another, right, another how many more minutes? Right, so I said, can you do better? Now, Good meanwhile, the you. balls, right? Oh, my God. Meanwhile, we're grateful right, right out of right, graduation right. school exactly. to, to, get a, to get booked yeah, for yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, can you do better? He said, no, I can't. I said, I'll take it. Right. So now I go over to my teacher, and I'm like, listen, I just got booked. <laughs> and he almost <laughs> fell on the floor. This is hysterical. Nobody gets booked even for $50 out of no, graduation. No, no. This is $500. Yes. Well, P.S., guess who else is on the show? So it's me, the guy who's booking me because right. he's a singer, right. and Tony Darrow. Oh my God, I Tony love Tony. He's Darryl. great. He's yes, great. Everybody. Yes. Well, P.S. Tony drops out okay. because he's having back surgery. You can right. you can look this up. It's a true story. Okay. And now it's me, this other guy. Right. But I got to do 20 minutes. Well, when I tell you I didn't have 20 minutes, no. I only just learned how to do comedy. So I'm writing the worst jokes ever. <laughs> The worst, right? The worst, and I'm on stage. I have three pieces of paper. They're on the stool. Right. I'm. I keep right. looking at the paper. Right. It was the worst thing ever. Wow. You don't even know this poor guy. I don't think. But you know, he still. He still know, paid you. He st of course he had to pay me because I did the show. Right. But it was the worst thing ever, people. Right. But you know what? I kept going. Of course you did. I kept going. I kept doing the open mics. Yeah. I kept. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then. Um, you know, I got booked back at the Bo Boca Black Box. Right. With Mike Marino, I opened yes. for him all the time. Oh, Eddie Brill, I opened for him yes. all the time. Yes, yes. I mean, you know. I'm, Shout out to Mike Marino and Eddie Brill. I performed yeah. at the brokerage a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here in New York when yeah. I'm in town. Yeah. And I love it. I love, I love. That's great. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, I have a really, great. I perform all over yeah. Florida. You know, at the improv. Yeah, and yeah. Oh, and just to let you know, um, look up Sharon on uh, Facebook. Um, and Instagram. And Instagram, it's, it's Sharon Pfeiffer, not verified yeah. on Insta. And you can see, like, yeah. upcoming shows, where you're yeah. going to be performing, Yeah, I, I'm always doing. posting. You can see everything on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so listen, we have to take my last break. And then, but when we come back, we're going to talk about, don't go away, her 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 movie yeah from brooklyn to boca from brooklyn to boca don't go away we'll be back after this <laughs> <laughs> wonder woman was everything to little girls especially that look like me she stands for being a voice for people that need a voice my organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making. And to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. Hey, everybody, it's Teresa from Tea Time. What's my show about? I interview people in the entertainment industry, producers, directors, actors, and guess what? My show is on every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on Channel 20 on Optimum TV. So tune in because it's fun, interesting, and exciting. Teresa Farrell. And who's the best actress you know? Teresa Farrell. And who's the best cast member in Bat Boy? Teresa Farrell. Who's got the best radio? Teresa Farrell. Yeah. Who's your favorite Jimmy? Teresa Farrell. Who are you loving right now? Teresa, <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Farrell. All right, so I love you too, baby. Love you as always. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm with Sharon Pfeiffer. She's an actor and a producer, a writer, a stand-up comedian. She does it all. I want to thank everyone for watching the show. Please like it, please share it. My regulars are watching, Anne and Bruno and Greg and Michael Norton. Thank you for watching the show, I appreciate it. Um, all right, so we got to talk about your baby, because it's your baby. My baby. From Brooklyn to Boca, we got two pictures. There's, the, there's one of them. And there's the other one. <laughs> I love it. And I want you to tell everyone Obviously, you wrote it. And I co-wrote it. You, I have you a co-writer. Co yeah. So tell everyone the concept of this, because this is hysterical. The concept is hysterical. So I'll try to be quick. So I <laughs> co-wrote this with a woman named Denny Scher. And Denny is an uh, option screenwriter who I, I'm very friendly with. And about three and a half years ago, 
Denny and I were just talking, and I told her, I've had this idea in my mind for many, many years right. about a TV show. This originally started as a TV show called From Brooklyn to Boca. What right. is it about? Right. Regina Refuto is married to Frank, forget about it, Frank Refuto, and he's a, a wise guy. Yeah. And they live in Brooklyn. They have a son, 12-year-old son named Carmine. Anyway, Frank and his crew get arrested. Right. One thing leads to another, and Frank and Regina decide they're going to go into witness protection. Right. Now, originally, they're supposed to go to Iowa. Right. Well, a couple of things happen, and they end up not going to Iowa. Right. They end up getting sent to Boca Raton. Boca. <laughs> so the agent, you know, the uh, the marshal, the federal marshal that's assigned to their case, tells right. them, listen, you're not only getting sent to Boca Raton, and you're not only going to have to change your name from the Refutos to the Greenblatts. Right, because Boca is like Jewish But you're going to have to there. become Jewish. Right. So you're no longer going to be, ca be Catholic. Don't be wearing that crucifix around your neck. But you're going you to have David. to become Jewish. So that's where all the comedy comes in. And it's, and it's very funny. Oh, well, my you, know, you, know the you know the joke, what's the difference between an Italian mother and a Jewish mother? Nothing. <laughs> Italian mother, a Jewish, an uh, Italian mother says, if you don't eat that, I'll kill you. And a Jewish mother says, if you don't eat that, I'll kill myself. Exactly. I love that. <laughs> I love that, but it's true. It is it's true. It's and totally Italians true. Are, and Jewish people, we're, we're a lot, very so much alike. Lot alike. So much alike. Yes. And so, basically, the crux of the story yeah. is that we're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. And we all bleed the same. Yes. And the bottom line is, it's really about love. Yeah. And just loving each other yeah. and 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 the humanity of all of us. So, what started out as a TV show and morphed into a feature film right. is now because I was doing the play, right. the Lost Virginity Tour. Right. A, a, a local producer yes. came to see the play. Right. She loved the play so much, she yeah. approached me after the play and said, Sharon, I heard that you have this film that you're working on, but honestly, I'd like to take that film from Brooklyn to Boca and let's turn it into a play. Wow. So right Love now, we it. are going to be putting From Brooklyn to Boca up Love on the it. stage. Love so it. we're, we're going to be doing the Chaz Palminteri Guide right. to right. Success yeah. and hopefully take our play and, and yeah, see what yeah. happens. So. That'll be great. And you have... Um, uh, attached to it. Who do you have attached to it? Well, or well, when we say? have LOIs for if it should ever, be, should we ever be so blessed that it become a right. become a, a movie? Yeah, yeah. We have some, you know, Michael Rispoli. Yeah. We have Eddie Brill. We yeah. have Michael Marino, uh, comedian. Uh -huh. We have Rhonda Shear. Yeah, I know. We have, I'm hoping um, to have her on the show. I'm trying to think of who else we were so lucky to have. I mean, I have a, a whole list of people who want to yeah, be in. Yeah, no, it. that's awesome. Um, that's great. But we, yeah, we're really excited. And it's very exciting. It's it's, it's a know, great concept. Yeah. Everybody who's ever, you know, we have a terrific sizzle. I should have sent over the sizzle yeah, for you. Yeah. But that would have taken up too much time. Yeah. But you can, you know, we have, if anyone's interested, please contact me. Yeah. Um, if anybody wants to donate money, <laughs> yeah, yeah. contact yeah. me. She'll send it over. We, we, yeah, that happens. That happens. But yeah, yeah. so we're excited. So the play is going to come first. Yeah, the play is going to come, definitely come and, first. And, um... How, Hopefully it'll snowball and people love it so much. How that, much? How much of? How much of? What you have? Do you have to tweak, if any, into a play version? Well, it's all done. The oh, play's done. The okay. play's written and it's done great. and it's ready to go. Okay. It's ready to go. So that's right great. now we're we're trying to find the right venue. venue. Yeah. And that's not always I easy. I have one in Manhattan. If you want to do it here. I of we'll course want to do it here. <laughs> yeah, of course, absolutely. Got a, got a great one. No, I, I. Would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. talk. Absolutely, you absolutely. See? This okay. is how it happens. This is how we make it happen. Um, but how long ago did this concept come to you? Because like I said, literally like, twelve years ago. Really? Yeah, it's been yeah. in my head for, and and it, thank God that I met Denny, because she's the person who forced me to put pen to paper. Right. Or you know. Tip, fingertips yeah, to the computer yeah, yeah. and you know put it down because I, I wanted to do it for so long and just never never considered myself a writer right right um, even right. though I had been writing my own jokes well and jokes own, yeah you do you know a joke uh, which I I was found hysterical and funny uh, 60s the new 40 which is <laughs> which is great but yeah you write you write as comedians we have we, to we write, write material so but we, do we don't write. give ourselves but the credit but it's very different from from sitting down and writing, because yeah, I wrote I wrote a short, 
and I didn't film it yet. It's on paper, but and it has to do with my daughter getting married. But you're going to film it. I'm going to. Yes, you are. But the, but the thing is, is that it's a different kind of way of writing. You know, it's a very different kind totally of way of writing different. than totally writing different. jokes. Yeah. And I got news for you. Writing a film on final draft is completely different than writing a play. Mm-hmm. Totally mm -hmm. different. Yeah. So it's it's really it's interesting that even at you know my age I'm learning so yes. much and I love it. Yes. And I love it meeting other creatives that yeah. I wouldn't yeah. I would never have met you had I not embarked on this creative journey. Well, that's the whole thing, you know. And I just love you it. You don't know, you know, you you meet people in your life. I say there's a lesson or a blessing. That's and right. You just, and you just, you know, and you just, you never know. You, you just never, never know. know. You never know. You never but know. But I'm going to hook you up with that venue in the city. Thank you. you Even last year at, at the Long Island Film Festival with, yes. with uh, Jerry and everybody. Yeah, Jerry Ferretti. I just, oh, I had when, seen you there. I don't know if we were properly introduced. I don't know. But I I, I know that we met, I, yes. we met there. Yeah, we did. And I met so many wonderful yes. people there. a lot of creative and, people. And it was so wonderful and validating for me to have my screenplay win. You know, the, my yes, screenplay yes. from Brooklyn to Boca yes, won yeah. best screenplay. I know. And it was amazing. Yeah. And I was I felt so validated because I really hadn't submitted right to any right. other film festivals. Mm -hmm. So to get that validation yeah. was like I couldn't believe it. So it's a, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing. Thank no, you. this is gonna be a fabulous journey. Thank you. It really is. I, I see you. it all happening. Thank you know, you. it's 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 awesome. Um, we have we have a, so we have a few minutes left, um, which is great. Um, I really touched upon everything I wanted to talk about. Well, let's talk um, about you. No, 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 <laughs> let's not talk about me. Um, uh, but I will tell you, I will fly to Florida if you need me. You, I don't have a problem. I would love for you. I to, will fly yeah. to Florida, and I'd love to work with yeah. you in the I mean, future. I mean, we're like sisters. I know we are. I know I'm just we separated could, at birth. I'm telling you, I'll put my blue contacts I have, I have, in. I said I. Have, I had told her a little bit about my war story married to yeah. my first husband. And we have uh, so much in common. We do. It's so crazy. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. But, you know, just to reiterate a little bit um, before, um, you know, you were a business owner. You were yeah. a business owner. Yeah, so, always. you know, you know how to take charge. You know yeah. how to delegate. You have that background. Well, you know, so I'm sure it's incorporated in, you know, yeah. what you want, what your vision is. Well, when you're a mo first of all, you know when you're a mom, oh, yeah, right? Well. So you have to run business. Yeah. I don't care what you do. We're always and you running multitask. business. And you multitask. Big multitask. multitaskers. So yeah. when I lived here in New York, before I left in 98, I always had nail salons. Right. That's what I did. Right, right. Believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I don't know if I'm allowed to say this without anybody being mad at me, but my the name of my salon, my nail salon was Hammer and Nails. Okay. Like hammering was one word. Right. And then nails. Right. And our logo was... Don't get mad at me, people, but my logo was We Speak Your Language. <laughs> it was. I love because it. Because yeah. we had all... I get it. I get it. Yeah. Just regular people yeah, working there. Yeah. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, I, mean, I don't no, want to get in trouble. But no, but... could never get away with it today. Right, right, right. I would have right, been shut down. Right, no, But I back know. then, I could get away yeah, with no, it. Yeah, no, I know. But that was my... I had two Because, you know, people salons. are woke now. Well, it's... You you're know, not allowed to... We talk about that at doing stand-up and how, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's really impinging on... Yeah. Some people don't care. Right. And they'll just say whatever they want, which but, is... That's on them. Yeah. But there were certain things that, you know... I won't do religion or politics. No, me neither. I don't. I stay away from that. Me too. You know, it's basically all about Italian, no, no, no. Yeah. family, no. food. Yeah, me too. Sex. You know, well, yeah... What's that? Can you talk about that? <laughs> what, what is it? What is it? What is right? that? Right? Well, I talk about Boca Raton. I'm like, I'm like, Listen to me, but I heard those seniors. Those seniors hang some kind of colored balls from no, their No, you're talking about the villages. Or, oh, the villages. I don't Listen, go there's anywhere some funky near stuff there. going on down there. No, where I live in Boca Raton, dating is a challenge. All the men are attached to their <laughs> oxygen tank. <laughs> And they're walkers. I'm not kidding. Oh, my God. That's great. And they all wear the same uniform. <laughs> Golf shirts. Right. Jeans from Costco. Right. And New Balance sneakers. <laughs> sounds Because like, they're about to lose their balance. Sounds, ah. like, sounds like my dad. I'm serious. <laughs> so funny. Oh, my God. Listen, this is great. I am so... I could do a whole routine with you right we now. We can. We so can. Listen, wait. We girl, <laughs> girls' night out? We don't call girls' night out anymore. You know what we call it? Antiquing. 
We're going antiquing. It's great. It's terrible. So yeah, well, I I uh, um I told uh, my <laughs> girlfriend who's 85. There's three. There's three um different websites for people older, and I I cannot tell it on air. So no, we're not allowed. We're, we're gonna we, tell you on the off the air. But listen, I have to thank you again for coming. Thank you. I'm so glad you're in New York, <laughs> and you were able to do this for me. Love to have you back. Can't wait to work with you. I want to thank everyone for watching Tea Time, supporting me. Remember, tell everyone you love you love them, and I'll see you next week. Ciao, everybody. Ciao.